Hey everyone, uh, in this video we will be talking about implicit differentiation. Okay, so what does it mean to be an implicit function? What is this implicit differentiation? So thus far, we have dealt with explicit functions like this one, where we can write y equals stuff just in terms of x. But you could have something like xy plus sine of y squared equals three, for instance. And here you would not be able to get y by itself and solve for y just in terms of x. So here we say y is an implicit function of x. So another example would be simply x squared plus y squared is four, so a circle. This would also be implicit because again, we can't write y as one function of x. So here, let, let's take a closer look at the circle one. So we've seen this function before, right? Or not function, but we've seen the circle before. We've seen how we can write this as two functions, right? The plus here would give us the top half. The minus would give us the bottom half of the circle. And each one of those is a function, but x squared plus y squared equals 4, of course, does not pass the vertical line test. So the real issue here is derivatives still make sense, right? We still have slope of tangent lines. We have tangent lines to this circle. And so it makes sense to ask, what is dy dx for an implicit function y? And in this case, it's harder now to find the actual derivative when we no longer have a nice simple expression of y in terms of x. So we have to use a new strategy and it's going to employ the chain rule. So the idea is to think of y as a function of x. So we know we don't have an explicit formula where y is just some f of x, but we do know that y depends on x. As x changes, y is also changing, right? We see that with the circle. So if you think of y as a function of x, if we then take the derivative of something like y squared, well, you can kind of think of it, treat it as f of x squared or something, right? It's some function of x, even if we don't have the formula. And if you saw something like this, right, our inside function is f of x, our outside function is squaring. And so we would use the chain rule on this. So this would be 2 f of x, f prime of x. And so for this reason, the derivative of y squared, we would write 2y, and then the derivative of y with respect to x. So 2y dy dx. Okay, so let's, let's do this in the example with the circle now. Okay, so we'll start with d or uh, x squared plus y squared is 4. We'll take the derivative with respect to x of both sides. So d dx. Okay, so x squared, that's just 2x. That's easy. As we saw previously, y squared, again, we're thinking of this as a function of x. So we're treating it with the chain rule. So y is our inside function. So we get 2y and then the derivative of the inside, which is dy dx equals zero, right? Derivative of four is zero. And next we wanna solve for dy dx. So we wanna get that by itself. So the first step of course is to get two x onto the other side. Then we can divide by two y. And so we end up with negative two x over two y or negative x over y. And so now notice this is something we haven't seen before, right? When we've had derivatives in the past, it's just been some function of x, but since our original function here was implicit, our derivative can also be implicit and can involve both x and y. And we can kind of check ourselves here. So if we, we draw our little circle, so notice that at x equals zero, we're seeing slope zero, which matches our picture here. And when y is zero, right, these, points, we see vertical tangent lines, and that makes sense here because we're dividing by zero. This is, you know, going off to infinity with our slope, right? And so those points kind of match, and we can also see, you know, slope like one here 
or negative one here at like pi over four if you were on the unit circle uh, and three pi over four just to kind of see when the x and y coordinates are the same up to a sign. All right, so let's do another example here. So again, this is something where we can't solve for y explicitly. If we want to find dy dx, we will take the derivative with respect to x of everything involved here. So note that xy cubed is going to involve the product rule. So let's go ahead and get that derivative. So we have derivative of x times y cubed, so just y cubed, plus x times the derivative of that with respect to x of y cubed. We'll take care of that in a second. Plus, again, the derivative with respect to x of sine of 3y is 0, because the derivative of 1 is 0. Okay, so now let's actually compute these derivatives. So y cubed, right, we're treating y as a function of x, so this is chain rule. So we get 3y squared, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is y, so that derivative is dy dx. Plus, this guy is double chain rule, so first sine is outside, so derivative of sine is cosine. Plug in our inside, 3y, times derivative of the inside, 3y requires the chain rule itself, so we get 3 and then times derivative of y, which is dy dx equals 0. And now we want to solve for dy dx, right? So we have this term here and this term here, and we're going to want to get the, the y cubed on the other side so that we have all of our dy dx's on one side and all of our non-dy dx terms on the other. Right, so we subtract the y cubed over, we get negative y cubed, and then I just went ahead and pulled out the dy dx from these terms. So note we had the coefficient here, 3xy squared, 3xy squared, and here 3 times cosine of 3y and 3 times cosine of 3y. And so lastly, to get dy dx by itself, we just divide over by this whole thing. Okay, and that is our final answer. Okay, so your first exercise for the class prep I want you to find dy dx for the hyperbola, if you remember that shape from Algebra 2, y squared minus x squared equals 1. And remember, it's okay to have both x and y showing up in your answer. Okay, so let's do another example where we're actually evaluating a derivative. So we want to find an equation of the tangent line to the graph of the equation e to the xy minus e equals 0 at the point 3, 1 third. So first of all, note that this really is a point on this graph because 3 times 1 third, or x times y there is 1, and e to the 1 is e, so e minus e is indeed 0. Um, so to find the tangent line, right, our slope is exactly dy dx. So we need to find that first, okay? So how do we do that here? Well, again, we want to implicitly differentiate. So e to the xy minus e equals 0. Do it to both sides. Well, e and 0 are constants. Those are going to remain 0. So it's really just dealing with e to the xy. So if we remember, this is a chain rule. And e to some function, right? e is our outside function here. Derivative is itself. We plug in the inside. So we just rewrite e to the xy times derivative of the inside. So derivative of xy requires a product rule, right? So 1 times y plus x times derivative of y, which is dy dx, equals 0. And then we can solve. So first we distribute here, and then this is going to allow us to solve for dy dx. So we would just want to subtract over the y e to the x y, and then we divide, and that gets dy dx by itself. And of course, we don't have to worry about dividing by zero here, right? e to anything is positive. These guys are going to cancel, and so we just get negative y over x. And so at the point th one third, this is negative one ninth, so that's our slope, and then we can just use point slope form, right? 
So we get y minus one third is negative one ninth times x minus three. Okay, so your second exercise for the class prep is to find the derivative at the point zero pi for xy equals sine y. And remember, so you're gonna get dy dx on each side. So remember that you want to end up grouping those guys together and factor that dy dx out. All right, thanks for watching.